Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And what we have today is reports coming out of China that they're looking to cut steel production, which could have an impact of 400,000 jobs in the Chinese marketplace. And uh, continued rumors as well that it's not just steel, but also the coal industry will be looking to set similar caps in order to protect the industry. So massive oversupply, the trend support prices, 400,000 job layoffs, doesn't just impact those steel workers, but all the surrounding infrastructure around that, including a lot of finance and banking workers. We help to finance those projects and obviously deal with the investments and um, finance of all those particular workers. And if you follow that through with cuts in uh, coal production, where does it end next? So China began to play a little bit of a hardball in order to try and protect some of those industries, stop oversupply and to support some of those prices as well. Now, there's also continued news um, this week talking about the crude oil price, which you will come to when we have a look at things from a technical perspective. Crude oil slumped 5% overnight uh, and it's continued to drop a little bit more this morning. So it seems to be last week's um, rally is a little bit short lived. Now, the aggressive move we saw in crude oil last night hasn't completely translated into the equity markets. Don't, don't get me wrong, those markets are down. They're just not down as much as what they were yesterday. So uh, last week. So there's still a little bit of extra room for, for maneuver right there just now. It'll be interesting to see where things pan out and from a technical perspective. When we look at the, uh, the markets about where we are from those major support levels, we are breaking below some support at the moment, but uh, we're quite far away from last week's session though, so we still have a little bit of extra room, but certainly the Chinese stock market will be playing, will be having its toll down 6% um, by the end of its close there today. And obviously these news items that are coming out locally from China will eventually filter through to, to Bloomberg and Reuters as well. It is a cause for concern in that region. Many people thinking about a hard landing in China. And the fact is that the Western uh, um, economies don't really have a lot of gas left in the tank to really do a lot of supportive measures. So China really could do with sorting itself out. Uh, the local um, officials there need to stop flip-flopping on uh, on decisions. Once they make it, once they kind of go a certain direction, they really need to stay the course because that's causing a lot of uh, a lot of concern by investors. Apparently, over one trillion US dollars in capital outflow has left China in the last couple of weeks and months. So that gives you an idea that people are just really looking elsewhere for their gains, and that is pulling a lot of money out of China, which will just be exacerbating the situation. So, without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and have a look at the markets from a technical perspective, starting off with the US 30 as ever. So looking at this just now, you can see that we are trading below potential uh, support at 15,904. 69% of CMC markets clients are currently short. Next potential support, 15,315. The other technicals are reversing as that negativity seeps in. Then having a look at the UK 100, uh, kind of negative move yesterday, another negative move this morning. We're already trading towards the bottom end of that range. 73% of CMT Marcus clients are currently long, with um, 5769 being the potential support, then 5600. As you can see, we are a good bit away from the, from the lows that we hit there last week, but this isn't very good from a technical perspective when we are already at the bottom end of the range. Looking at Japan, 225, again, two negative candles, 16,440. We did have a strong rejection of a move below 16,000. End decision by CMC clients, 53% of clients are currently short. The other technicals are relatively neutral. Jumping on to dollar yen, uh, quite traditionally that safe haven asset, 54% of CMC market clients are currently long. Uh, people are maybe buying gold at the moment because they're not quite sure about the dollar because of Wednesday's FOMC. We, are, we have bounced off the session lows, so that's kind of interesting actually. Um, the other technicals are relatively neutral with 116 spot 80 being the next potential support. Moving on to West Texas crude, you can see that 5% move, not quite a bearish engulfing pattern, more like dark cloud cover. Uh, we followed through with another slight negative move this morning, 26.73 is the next potential support. We're trading below both moving averages, other technicals are relatively neutral, slow stochastic, just not quite breaking through that 20% level, and this is very telling. CMC clients, 51% long, it's almost 50-50, they don't know what to do next. Moving on to gold, we've got a technical, a potential technical breakout of the tip of this candle right here. Uh, we're trading below one, uh, we're trading above 1,115. 69% of CMC market clients are short, which is um, quite interesting if there's going to be a safe haven move higher. Uh, but of course, if the FOMC comes out uh, with a, a relatively dovish statement, that could be kind of interesting for gold as well. If the dollar doesn't get that interest rate uh, talk ongoing again, they did seem to think they're going to get four rate interest rate hikes in 2016. 
that would be a bit of a tall order right now to be completely honest, but that's where we currently are for gold. Moving on to euro dollar, um, the euro looking relatively well uh, supported. Uh, the euro uh, still showing a lot of strength considering Mario Draghi said there's almost no limit to what the ECB would do to support the eurozone economy. Um, and that's because traders just don't believe that he is going to embark on QE as of yet. Uh, just talk, no action, and traders aren't stupid in that, in that regard. For as long as you see your dollar staying above one spot zero eight, that's adding uh, fuel to the fact that traders just don't believe that Draghi is going to do anything. If we see a move below one spot zero eight, targeting one spot zero six, that uh, will add a little bit more weight to that. 83% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short, anticipating that move to the downside. Then looking at GPP USD, 87% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. We've had a rejection of the lows here, a rejection of the highs here, and we're oscillating around one spot 42. With, we're actually just slightly below that level at the time of recording. So certainly when you look at the trend, uh, the trend is not so great, um, but one spot 42 is a very important level for uh, GBP USD. So remember, Wednesday brings the FOMC, 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, you've got the Bank of Japan, it has, uh, it has its meetings towards the end of the week. In fact, if I just go to Market Pulse and have a look at my market calendar for a second, uh, we have CCI today. Uh, tomorrow, we've got house prices in the UK, uh, the petroleum data from the US and the FOMC, as we discussed. Thursday brings UK GDP, German CPI, durable goods in the US and employment claims. And then Friday, you've got uh, CPI from the Eurozone, GDP for the US, and finishing things up with the University of Michigan Sentiment Index. Well, that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect, guys. Very good luck with your trading, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much, and goodbye.